Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I cannot believe this is my very first Christmas 2020 video. I'm so happy the Christmas season has finally come. And in the world of YouTube, I'm really late, okay? I've been seeing Christmas videos for the last three weeks and just sitting there still with my Halloween skeletons. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my Christmas tree decorations. You would have seen them all over my Instagram if you follow me there at Claire's Crafty Corner. But most excitingly about this video is that I get to try a brand new resin. And it is this one. This was sent to me to use by Vuba and yeah, it did not disappoint. So the video is quite lengthy because I'm actually doing a step-by-step -step tutorial A to Z of resin. Everything I think you need to know about using resin, working with resin, what this feels like to work with, how I use it, all the stirring, the measuring, factors that might impact your resin not curing and then I also talk about top coating at the end and I show you how I do that as well. So it's very much a a to Z of resin, perfect if you're just starting out or if you're really thinking about getting into it. Hopefully this video will help you Help you, and I'm so excited to get started. I'm going to stop talking because it is a long one, probably will be about 25 minutes, which is the longest video I've done in a year, probably. Don't go back and look because I might be wrong. <laughs> anyway, I hope you love it and yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, something I never ask you guys to do but I need you to now because I need this to be my full time job I've decided I never want to go back to work. I'm just too used to being in my house. So this is what the Vuba resin looks like. Am I even saying that right? Someone needs to let me know. It might be Vuba. Sure kit itself is 3 kg which is such a great amount of resin this is a two to one ratio resin measurable by volume not weight so really handy if you have any of these calibrated cups that have got ooh, the measurements on the side this one here says two to one so i know this is going to be perfect it, they do three different depth resins on the website if you check it out i'm going to link everything below this vista stream is for your thin pores your shallow pores between zero and ten millimeters which is perfect for the molds we're going to do today and the vista lake is the next one up that's 10 to 30 millimeters and then the deep pore resin is called vista ocean and that's for 30 to 60 millimeters but again you can check all that out on their website so other information about Vuba is that it's actually made in the UK. It's actually made up in Yorkshire. I won't do the accent because, you know, we all, we all know I love an accent, but I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> it's also heat resistant up to 90 degrees, which is really helpful to know if you've got a hot cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be okay on your coasters. Um, this is also on their website. It says it's food safe, which is great because the other two resins I've been using are not food safe. Um, at least they haven't been tested yet, so they can't actually declare that it's food safe. But this stuff is, we know that resins can be scratched. We know that resins can be damaged over time. But Vuba has some scratch resistancy in there. It doesn't mean you're never going to be able to scratch it. Not at all. It just means there's some scratch resistancy in there. So this is recommended to be cured at 20 degrees. Now I do resin in my craft room and when the weather's like this, it's freezing cold outside, it's raining outside, I always have the heating on around 21 anyway, um, 21, 22. And it says touch dry after 24 hours and demoldable after 48 hours. Now if anyone else out there knows, that's quite a long time, but I am gonna check this out. Now one thing I did notice about this resin, now I've used quite a few resins and quite often they don't always come with safety instructions. They do say non-toxic, no gases, etc. And that sometimes um, allows people to get a, sen a false sense of security, like they don't have to wear a mask because it says non-toxic. On the back here, it actually says causes skin irritation, can cause serious eye damage. It's toxic if you breathe it in do not breathe this in wear gloves wear eye protection so i love that that is on there because that is so important and i'm so excited because this is my first christmas video oh my goodness me a brand new resin a christmas video i'm sorry it already feels like christmas i've got from wish online they are fat chunky rubber 
um, well silicon and these ones I then found on Amazon they are identical to each other but this is a thin shiny silicon this is a fat chunky matte silicon so these ones come out matte these ones come out a little bit shiny so yeah we're going to use all of the ones that I got we're going to use both kits two different colors and I'm going to show you how I use these to measure my resin, I am going to be using this measuring cup that I showed you earlier. I'm going to put my A up to this line and pour my B up to this line. And then I'm going to stir it for five minutes. Most resins say stir for three minutes. But honestly, I just feel so much more confident if I stir for five. At least that way, if anything goes wrong, if there's a reason why it hasn't cured, I know it's not going to be the stirring. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Making our Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased but this is my favorite holiday It's a chance to start over new Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you These are the good times with you I have poured the resin and it really did feel lovely It felt very familiar It didn't, it didn't feel super thick or really watery So really happy with the consistency before I pour my mould, I've opened all my windows just so that I can talk to you without a mask. I'm going to clean all my moulds and I'm going to do that using tape. If you've been following me on Instagram or TikTok, you'll know that I have made a massive 65 batch of these to go out on my Etsy. So they have got some debris left inside, maybe the odd bit of glitter. You don't want that contaminating your next piece. So, <coughs> tape is the best way to clean your molds. I've already done a video on this, but you just wanna get it into all the little nooks and crannies on your molds to make sure that none of the old glitter contaminates your new project. Right, they are all clean. Ideally, you'd do this before you even open the bottle of resin, but yeah, this is me. <laughs> I'm going to transfer the resin from the big cup into these smaller silicon reusable cups. They are just really handy if you're just starting out with resin. Try if you can to just go all silicon, reusable silicon, just to minimize your waste. There's gonna be waste with every single thing you do in daily life. But if you can try and minimize, that would be really great. While I'm talking about the color, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about resin itself and reasons why it doesn't cure, whether it goes sticky and things like that as well. So the colors I'm gonna use in these molds are reds, I'm going to use some pigment color and some red glitter. The pigment color is going to hide the fact that there's any gaps in the glitter. If the glitter sinks, it's gonna hide that. So that's all good. I'm gonna throw a few drops in there. What you don't wanna do if you're adding things to your resin, so if you're adding colorant, mica powder, um, anything wet, so pigment paste, pigment colorant, ink, anything like that, and mica you don't want to add too much it will affect the science <laughs> there's a word there is a word i don't know what it is it will affect the resin it it will prevent it from setting properly it will prevent it from reaching its full potential glitter i haven't found a problem because glitter is a dry substance so i feel like with resin you can pack as much glitter in there as you want glitters i'm using here today are my favorite glitters ever they are by hemway i will put the details in the description box but i'm using red fine and red chunky so the second reason your resin might not cure properly is the temperature of your room most resins require that you do it in a warm room not too hot not too cold but if your room is really cold it absolutely will not set it, it will be sticky for days i made a tray recently and the temperatures plummeted overnight down to zero and i didn't even know we were in for a cold snap so i woke up in the morning and i had this white cloud over the top of my tray which i then had to sand back down and re-top coat and oh, it was just unnecessary longness 
So the third reason your resin might not set is that you haven't measured it properly or mixed it properly. Measuring your resin is crucial to the whole thing. So as long as you have measured absolutely accurately, then it falls down to whether you stirred it thoroughly, which is why I stir for five minutes. I feel like resin's expensive, these projects are long, they're not quick projects, so an extra two minutes on your stirring, I just feel like could make all the difference. So measure and stir. So I am filling this entire top row, I'm filling them completely to the top, and what I'm doing is going slowly because there's so many little nooks and crannies that that resin has to find its way into. And I don't want to pour too fast in case it just traps air under there, and I'm pouring quite close to the mould. I heard someone on TikTok say they pour their resin from a height. I've never heard of that, so if anyone can fill me in on whether that's the right way, I've never done that, and in a year and a half, I've I've never had a problem but yeah that's something I heard I'm not using heat with these if you do get air bubbles in your piece if you're working on a big flat area like an ocean or a tray you can really afford to use a culinary blowtorch to get rid of those bubbles but with these delicate molds you can use a clicky lighter as long as you don't hold the flame over the mold but like who would I've never had a problem in a year and a half using a flame a clicky lighter flame um, with this kind of project you just want to go quick Hold it over, but don't hold it over too long, just to get rid of any surface bubbles. But in this project, I'm not going to use heat at all, purely because if the bubbles do rise to the surface, they're not going to be that visible, and they are going to be at the back of those moulds. So with this second set of moulds, I am only pouring the resin up until it reaches the top of those details. So with the Christmas tree and the deer and the merry word, I'm only pouring just until it reaches the top. I'm not going to cover those details up. That's going to allow me to pour the second layer showing through the colour. So it's it really, there are really only two ways to use these moulds. If you know of a third way, um, but yeah, let me know. As far as I can tell, there's definitely a two a two layer process to these molds so with the tree i'm just going really slowly and all of that resin has to work its way in between those tree branches so just keep on pouring it slowly in the area where you want it to push itself through and just yeah let it do its job if you don't get the resin in those holes obviously there will then be air pockets and your tree won't look right when it comes to doing the second layer with the snowflake and the ball ball, I just filled them up because they really are just too tricky to even try layers. <laughs> so the two methods I'm showing you here will produce slightly different results. If you fill the mould right to the top, the clapper at the bottom of the bell, which I actually had to Google the name of it, I didn't know. <laughs> I was just going to call it the bell ball bit, I, I, I really didn't know. The clapper at the bottom of the bell will be one block colour if you fill the moulds to the top. If you do it in this method that I'm showing you here, where you only fill up as far as the tree, then the clapper of the bell will be the same colour as the tree detail when you demold. So I don't know if it was TikTok or somebody did advise me to only use half these moulds, only fill them halfway because they're so deep, but I just really do prefer filling them up, making them nice and chunky. You can only fill them up halfway and just leave where that deer is. You could just leave that as a hole, so it will just be a hole in your piece. Um, but they might require some sanding down because resin will go up the sides creating a bit of a concave detail in your piece so you might then have to sand them back down to make them flat because the edges can also be quite sharp and if anyone knows me they will know I am a tad bit lazy when it comes to sanding and I would rather I would rather put three layers in than have to sand down one little layer I'm really really terrible but I have sanded and it's worked but I'm just not a fan of sanding resin with this final one, you want to take real extra care not to drown out that word. The word says merry, and yeah, you want the thinnest, thinnest possible layer on the bottom of this one, just so that it, 
surrounds that word it doesn't cover that word so this is the one where you really really have to go slowly so that's it I'm gonna leave these all now for 24 hours and then tomorrow we will backfill those ones that still have a gap and with the other ones we will demold and fill from the front Right, I am so excited to bring you this information because this is a brand new resin. I've never tried it before and I know the website says they are touch dry after 24 hours. So I've been checking on these all night because I want to pour this second layer. It's been 12 hours exactly to the minute. So it was 11am this morning when I poured. It's now 11pm and listen. Guys, they're touch dry. <laughs> <laughs> they are touch dry so within a time frame of around 12 hours i have found this resin to be touch dry so it has been 23 hours since i've poured these so it's now 9 a.m the next morning and i've had a really good feel of all of them they are pretty solid there's not much bend in there and yeah, so I know that I'm now going to be able to demold these, to turn them around, getting ready to fill all of those voids with the white pigment. Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me. Hang by the fire and chill. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories. Oh, and I've been. I'm using is from resin a it is opaque pigment it is the only white I have but honestly it's such an incredible white you don't want to put too much in but enough to really give you that solid block color so a really quick show here this is the matte mold this is the one that came out of the matte mold and this is the one that came out of that semi shiny mold I have seen shinier but this is the reason I give them all a top coat anyway because it really makes that glitter pop but you can see really clearly here the difference between the matte and the shiny so I've mixed up my small bit of resin and I've added the white pigment and now I'm going to fill these three molds right to the top with that white you were close, forget about everyone else Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories Oh, oh These moulds are the trickiest, absolutely the trickiest You can see straight away, I tried pouring it in and it just goes everywhere It does eventually find its way into those channels And yeah, I've done it neater <laughs> You can actually use white acrylic paint in these. White acrylic paint would work a dream. Just pour your paint in, squeegee, like a little rubber squeegee, squeegee it into those um, crevices and all of those little nooks and crannies and then just wipe off the excess. But I just like to use resin. So the best method I've found is to just use a cocktail stick and drag that resin out into all of the crevices. And what that does is it creates a path for the resin to flow into. So once you've done this and you've got it into all of the nooks and crannies, then you can just pour resin straight into the center point there and it will find its way out into those branches of the snowflake. I am gonna put the music on now, stop talking and let you enjoy some Christmas cheer.
This mold again is another fiddly one. You can put your acrylic paint in there, squeegee it into all the crevices and then wipe off the excess. But I'm going to use resin and I'm going to use it in the same way. So I'm going to pour the resin all over that word and it does look messy to start with but the resin finds its way down into the, f the, the letter forms and then I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna drown it in the white and then wipe it off um, I'm pretty much finished I'm finished for this session until these dry so I'm just gonna get my finger and rub my finger across just wiping off all of the excess and this is the first time I've actually filled up the mold to the point where the star has got a back on it um, so I actually then go ahead and fill that star with white and this is the first time I've done that so it's really really cool and I love the effect. So here they are finished you can see that white star there on the Christmas tree I actually love it yeah I really love it so I'm just gonna clean up the edges you can see a little bit of spillage on some of these so just get a cotton bud or a piece of tissue and just wipe up those edges and that's it so I'm gonna wait now for them to dry so it is the next day I came upstairs after 12 hours exactly like I did with the red glitter and it wasn't the same at all so with the red glitter they were touch dry I could tap them you could hear them but with the white it really was still quite soft it was just about touch dry but I wouldn't want to tap them I would literally leave marks and that is just going back to what I said with the red glitter not making an impact so you really can pack the glitter in there because it's a solid dry substance but with the liquid the pigment the ink and the dyes it does change the consistency of the resin and it takes longer for them to set but it's 24 hours later now and they are demoldable which is just great and yeah you can see this one absolutely love the red and the white let me know what you think this is from a shiny mold so you can see the way that glitter is shining it still will look much better with a top coat and I'm gonna show you the top coating now and how I do my top coats this resin is um, from zero mil so that is ideal for a top coat as well with this mold it's a bit fiddly to get it out but you just have to go slowly so if you are demolding your resin you need to go easy on your silicon molds they do deteriorate over time and if you just whip them out it really can tear or rip your silicon so here is the one on the left was the packed glitter that was just 100 percent glitter the one on the right was the two layers and you can see a visible difference because the one on the left was a matte mold and the one on the right was a shiny mold and this is the results you're going to get if you're using matte molds which is why i top coat same again with these ones this is the shiny mold absolutely love these and then this is the matte mold and the difference is so clear but i'm going to show you a top coat now so let's go <laughs> Let's go outside, the snow is falling down And every child is having so much fun The snowman is twice the size as me With a smile as quirky as mine We're holding hands to keep each other warm While we stand and watch a choir perform And all the Christmas songs that we love Yeah, all the Christmas songs that we love and in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire Cause all I want is to spend this day with you Let me give you a Christmas A moment we'll fill with love and joy mm -mm, So beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe's baby with you I don't need any presents As long as I spend this day with you so beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe's baby with you Ooh. I'm making plans for what we're gonna do I feel so blessed that I can be with you Cause God knows that I've been longing for ya I just wanna hold you close You know the stars are shining just for you Let's take a walk and we can follow the moon Not till we reach a place we can stay Maybe kiss a bit and dream away And in a while we're gonna go inside And drink our chocolate by the fire Cause all I want is to spend this day with you Let me give you a Christmas 
24 hours later, I absolutely love them. So with the resin, I fully, I can recommend it. I absolutely loved working with it. It felt very familiar. Nothing out of or out of the ordinary at all. Really lovely to work with. Pretty much did the same job in the same amount of time as all the other resins I've worked with, to be honest. So I was worried about that long cure time, but I still managed to make these within a two to three day period, which is how long it takes me anyway. So yeah, really happy with the way they turned out. The top coat really just sets them off. It's late at night filming this, so they do look a little bit orangey, but they, trust me, they are so, so red. Hopefully I will have these up on my Etsy following the video and yeah. I really hope you've loved this one. Let me know what you think and if you've made it this far, I don't know, let me know what your favourite colour is because that's a massive big deal. <laughs> These are just, it's just a clip here of all the other colour combinations I've made so far. And thank you so much for watching. This was a long one and I will see you in the next one.